Good morning, Redeeming Love Christian Church. Welcome, welcome, welcome to all of our first-time special guests. Welcome to all of our members and partners and all those of the house of the Lord. We're so excited to have you with us on this morning. We thank God for your presence. We thank you for tuning in. There are many other places that you could have went today, but you chose to be with us. So we say welcome to Redeeming Love, where we're called to demonstrate the love of God that redeems, unveils, and empowers. We're going to go together and we're going to petition the Lord to move on our behalf, to open doors, and to make ways. The Word of the Lord says that He makes ways in the wilderness and He makes rivers even in the desert places, the dry places. And so as we together go before the Lord, these are the things that we're going to cry out for. I believe that we pray in faith, and I believe that what we pray, the Lord hears. And as, as long as we pray according to his will, he shall indeed perform it. Let's, let's uh, just uh, read a scripture, a quick scripture, and then that'll be the basis for our prayer together on this morning. Amen. I'll be reading out of Psalms, the 23rd division, and it reads this way. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemy. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's pray together. God, there's no one like you in all the earth. There's no one, Father, that compares to you. And Father, we're so thankful for the opportunity and the privilege to come into your house on this morning. And so we enter into your gates with thanksgiving, into your courts with praise. We are a thankful people, and we bless your holy and hallowed name. We thank you that you're the good shepherd. You're the one that leads us and guides us. And because you lead and guide us, Father, we find that there is no lack in us, for you provide all of our needs. To the degree, God, that there is nothing that we want, there is nothing that we lack, and all that we desire is to be with you. We desire to be in your presence. We desire your word. As a deer panteth for the water, so does our souls thirst and long for you. And so, God, today we thank you, Lord. We thank you that you make us to lie down in the green, lush pastures, Father. You prepared a place for us to rest. And so, God, we thank you today that we can find rest in you. That no matter what's going on in our lives, no matter what the situation or circumstance, Father, we don't have to worry, neither do we have to fret. But, Father, you prepare a place of rest for us, a place, Father, that we can lie down, a place, Father, where we can rest in you, and for that today, God, we're thankful, Lord. Lord, we thank you today that not only do you provide a place for us to rest, but you lead us beside the still waters. God, we thank you that you always supply for our needs. Whatever it is, God, that we stand in need of, Father, you know even before we ask. And so, God, we thank you that you supply all of our needs. We thank you, Lord, that you're Jehovah Jireh. We thank you, Lord that you give us what's needed and what's necessary. You are the Lord God who provides. Father, we're so thankful. We're so grateful. We thank you today, Father, that we can come into your presence and our souls are restored, God, in you. We thank you, Father, that where we have been beat down and where life has gotten the best of us, Father, we can come into your presence. And one word, God, one word will restore us. One word, Father, will bring the joy that we've lost. One word, Father, will give us peace and surpasses all understanding. One word from you, God, is all we stand in need of today, to be restored in you. God, we thank you today, Father that you lead us, God, in the path of righteousness, even for your own namesake. 
So, Father, give us the wherewithal and the ability to stand up right, God, to walk upright before you, to always do the right thing, God, to always do the thing that pleases you, to always do what your word declares and commands us to do, God. But we desire to please you today, Father. And so, God, even in our troubling times, when we walk in valleys, Father, when it looks like and it seems like there is no help for us, Lord, we know, Father, that your rod, your staff, they're there to remind us and bring us comfort, to let us know that you are with us, God. Your word says you'd never leave us nor forsake us. And Father, we stand firmly on your word today, believing, God, that what we ask, God, and when we cry out, that you incline your ear to hear our cry. And not only do you hear our cry, Father, but you come and see about us. God, for that we are thankful. Lord, we thank you today that we have no reason, no cause to fear. We have no reason or cause to fear, Father. Why? Because you are with us. And because you're with us, you are more than those who are against us. And so, God, we thank you that you've even prepared a table before us in the presence of our enemies, God. God, you allowed our enemies to see your hand upon us, God. You've allowed our enemies to see that you are with us, God. That you bring fright and terror to them, God, because they know, because you are with us, God, that we shall not be defeated, that we will walk in victory, and we will accomplish the plan and will and purpose of God in which you have sent us. But Father, we rest in you today. We hold fast to you today, God. We don't go to the left nor to the right, Father. But we wholly follow you with all of our heart, all of our strength, God. We seek you and we search you. We go after you and we pursue you. And your word declares that we would come after you, Father. You said you would make yourself to be found by us. So today, God, that we're seeking God, let us find you. Let us find you, Father. For there is no help for us if we don't find you. We thank you, God, for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you that you have anointed our head with oil. We thank you, Father, that our cup, even our cup, Father, runneth over. We thank you for the overflow, God. The overflow of your word in our life. The overflow of your promises towards us, God. The overflow of favor, Father, that we walk in. We thank you that our cup in every area, God, overflows and runs over. We thank you, Lord, today that goodness and mercy follows us all the days of our lives, God. That new, more, new mercies meet us every morning. That you bless us to open up our eyes and to, to step into another day, God. And right there, Along with us, fathers, goodness and mercy. What is man that out mindful of him? And the son of man that thou would visit him, God. You're so kind and loving to us. And in fact, Father, it's your loving kindness that draws us today. Your loving kindness, Father, that causes us to seek after you and pursue you with all of our strength. It's because you first loved us. Father, not because we were so wonderful, not because we did everything right, but you first loved us and your word declares, while we were yet sinners, you commanded your love towards us, God. And Father, for that, there are no words, no words to say how thankful we are that you gave your son as a ransom, our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to die for the cost and the payment fully complete of all of our sin. Father, we're so thankful today we're so appreciative that we can be in your presence once again. Have your way, Holy Spirit, in the service. Move like never before. Speak to your people. Say what thus says the Lord. And Father, we'll incline our ear to hear and not just be hearers of the word only, God, but doers also. Father, we thank you today and our expectation is of you that we don't leave this place the same way that we came in. In Jesus' name, we pray and believe. And everyone said, amen, amen, and amen. Well, I'm excited about all that's going to take place on this morning. And right now, we're going to uh, go into worship, and we're going to ask you to go right in with us. Don't get up and don't go off to get your coffee. Don't go off to get your sandwich. Stay right there, and let's worship the Lord together. Amen. 
Amen. I'll be back in just a few minutes. God bless you. Sing with us.
Can we just take a few seconds and just thank him for his mercy, his loving kindness and his tender mercies? Can we just take some time to thank God for his mercy, his mercy? What we should have received, he didn't give to us. What we should have and what we rightfully deserved, he did not give to us. And, and instead, he extended the scepter. He extended mercy to us. God, we're so thankful today for your mercy. New mercies every morning. God, we're so thankful. We don't deserve your, more, your mercies, God. And I can't speak for others, but I know in my life there have been times when I did not deserve another chance, God. But you, in your infinite wisdom, God, you decided to extend mercy to me, to give me another opportunity to get it right, to cover me in the blood, God. You extended mercy to me. And for that, Father, for that we're grateful. For that we're thankful, Father. For giving us what we don't deserve, God. For giving us, Father, for giving us your mercy. We don't deserve it. We don't do anything to warn it. And oftentimes we do just the opposite. We deserve punishment, Father, but you extend mercy to us. We deserve judgment, Father, but you give us another chance and another opportunity. And for that, for that, I give you praise. For that, we bless your name. For that, God, we say hallelujah. We thank you for your mercy. In Jesus' name. We're going to go right into our time of giving, which is a continuation of our worship. It's not a separate moment. It's not a separate time. We don't stop worship to give. Our giving is an act of worship. It is an act of sacrifice. And so I'm so appreciative of all those members, partners, all those who, who uh, glean from this, this uh, ministry and live stream, all those who receive the word and you're strengthening the word of the Lord and you go forward in the things of God because you've been strengthened by his word. I'm thankful for all of you all who sold your tithe, your offering into this ministry so that we can do what it is he's called us to do and that is share the gospel of the good news of Jesus Christ. 
I want to read something to you, and I want you to get this down in your spirit as we are preparing ourselves to give. If you, if you are, are giving for the first time, there's multiple ways in which you can give. You can give PayPal at, at uh, um, the uh, it's PayPal at donations at redeeming.org. Uh, again, that's PayPal. If you're going to give it in PayPal, it's donations at redeeming.org. You can give by way of Cash App in this dollar sign, the LVE, the Love Church, the LVE Church. Or you can go to our website, www.redeeming.org, and uh, there's a portal, a giving portal on the website where in which you can give there also. But I want to read this text to you, and this is out of Isaiah 55, and this is what it says. It says, For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not there, but it waters the earth, and makes it to bring forth in bud. Listen to this. That it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I have sent it. This is what I want you to get, and I want you to get just around your hand, because I, I want you to understand something. That when I read this, it blew me away I, as, I, as I was doing some study uh, earlier this week. It just blew me away because it says, and, and you know, and, I, and I, I recite this scripture, and I say he gives bread to the eater and seed to the sower. You know, uh, but, but this is what it says. Listen, it says, as the, as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, and it does not return, but it waters the earth, and makes it bring forth in bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. He calls it to rain. He does some things. So, so here, here's, the, here's the thought I want you to have in your mind. This is the picture I want you to see. We can sow all day, but if God doesn't rain on it, <laughs> we can sow all day, but if God does not rain on it, it does not produce a harvest, it does not make it to forth, come forth in bud if he does not rain on it. Water, I want you to understand this, water is a type and symbol of the word. Can I say to you that it's the word that you've hit in your heart? That is the word where in which you live and, and governs your life. It's the word that you follow hard after. It's the word that, that uh, you, you do what God has said. You do, uh, in fact, uh, Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. It's, it's the things that we do concerning the word that's going to cause it to rain in our lives. It'll cause it to water the seed that's sown. So it says to me, it's not just enough to sow. We got to live right. We got to love one another. We have to allow the word of God to govern our lives. We can't just sow and expect because we've sown something. Because I've come to understand, and there are many uh, uh, pictures and many, many uh, uh, descriptions in the word of God where there is famine in the land. And it does not matter if you sow something in the time of famine, because if there is no rain, it will not come forth. It will not bud. It will not give seed to the sower, neither bread to the eater. It's just important that we, it's just as important that we live right, that we love one another, that we follow hard after God's word, even to the impact and to the degree in which we sow our seed. But we want the Father to rain down on our seed, cause it to come forth, but that there may be seed given to the sower and bread for the eater. Amen. Amen. Listen, I'm, we're getting ready to make our declaration on this morning. And so I'm going to ask you to open wide your mouth. I want you to say this with such tenacity and fortitude and such grit and, and belief and faith that your neighbors next door hear you. They come and knock on your door because they're so moved by what they hear you say. Would you join me on this morning? Let's say it together. Lord, today, we honor you with our substance in the first fruit of our increase. I have brought the holy tithe and my offering out of my house and into your house. Out of obedience to your word, the floodgates of heaven are now open over my life and the devourer is rebuked for my sake. I decree that every need in my life, my family and my church is many in abundance. As we receive today's offerings, we are believing the Lord for 
storehouses to be unlocked, manifested miracles, dreams and visions, angelic visitations, job positions and promotions, raises and bonus, bonuses, provision and resources, favorable settlements, checks in the mail, finding money, open doors, revelation to pass on wealth to our children's children, souls and more souls. Souls and more souls. Souls and more souls saved and free. Father, will you do it according to your word, according to your will? Will you do it, Father, because we've, we've asked this of you, God, that you would save those who are not saved, that you would heal the brokenhearted, that you would set even today, God, the captive free. Do it, Father. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost in here today. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. So listen, I want to ask you to uh, turn your attention to whatever device you're watching or the stream on. We have some important announcements and information we want to share with you. And right after those announcements and information, I'll be back for the word of the Lord. Amen, amen.
Amen, amen, and amen. Welcome back. I trust that you have uh, listened to all of the announcements and uh, you will govern yourself accordingly. I want to ask you if you would uh, be so kind as to uh, partner with us and prepare yourselves for the men's prayer call, uh, which will begin the 14th of September all the way through the 12th of, uh, 12th of October, Monday through Friday. Um, um, we won't be meeting for prayer call on Saturdays and Sundays, but Monday through Friday during the week, 6 a.m. to 6.15 a.m. Going to ask you to please join us. I'm so excited. We're going to have men from our church. We're going to have men from the fellowship. We're going to have other pastors, uh, brothers, and covenant brothers uh, um, sharing in prayer as well. And so you don't want to miss it. I believe there's something that happens when a man prays. I believe that there's a sound that goes up to the heavens and it certainly gets the Father's attention. Not that it doesn't get the attention of God when women pray because we all know that it certainly does. But I'm believing God that in this time of prayer, there's gonna be some things stirred up in the men. There's some, gonna be some things that happen where the men are concerned as they prepare themselves to pray and as they actively participate in the prayer moment. And so again, please join us. Again, that is September the 14th through October 12th at 6 a.m. It starts and by 6.15, we're done. And so it doesn't take a whole bunch of your time. You can roll back over and go to sleep, but you wanna participate. You wanna make sure that you prepare yourself to participate in that time of prayer. There's a, a number that you see on the, on the screen there. There's a number as well as the access code. That information will make, we'll make sure that week after week, we provide you with that information, but write it down, put it on something that you'll, you'll remember where you put it. You'll be able to locate and find it so that you can make sure to join us for the month long men's prayer call. Amen. Amen. I want to just shout out happy birthday to the birthday twins. That's Elder Mario Smith and Pastor James Tazzle. God bless you all too. My spiritual sons, I love you all dearly. And uh, your birthday twins. So listen, we're going to turn up together. All three of us, we're going to get together and some of the other men as well. And uh, we're going to have a good time in celebrating you all on uh, your birthday. We will not and certainly cannot uh, forget uh, Ariana Gray, who is having a birthday on the 11th of September. We thank God for her and we'll make sure to celebrate her as well. I want to ask you to solicit your prayers all across uh, this community, all across this great state, all across this nation, and even this whole world. Ask you to intercede on behalf of other people. Intercede when you see something on the news, when you hear something that's taking place. Stop and pray. Pray for individuals. Pray for the hand of God to intervene. Pray for the, the Spirit of God to be moved toward in, in that situation. Pray, pray, pray. This is a time where I believe that we need prayer like we've never needed it before. We need people who aren't afraid to pray, who will open up their mouth and, and uh, remind the Lord of his word concerning us, remind him of his promises. He made us. The Lord is not slack in his promises. I believe that everything that he said he's going to do, it shall indeed be performed. Amen? Amen. I think those are all the announcements I have. And again, uh, excited about all that's going to take place in the coming days. Are you ready for the word? Are you ready for the word? I don't know about you, but I am ready because we're starting a new, a new series. We're starting a series. We have closed out our series on divine encouragement. And uh, I'm thinking uh, the Lord uh, and all that he did for us and all uh, that he spoke to us concerning even that time and that season. I'm believing God that as we move into this next segment, that it's going to really uh, open up our eyes and our hearts to receive the word of the Lord. And that he's going to speak to us some things that we have never heard before. He's going to show us some things uh, that we're to grab hold of and not just hear, but be a doer of the word as well. And so I'm excited. I'm excited, Marquia, about all that God's going to do in the life of every believer under the sound of my voice. I'm going to start with, uh, and I'm going to start in, as, even as we do this series, I don't even know. I, I think there are several uh, weeks to the d divine release segment uh, of, our, of our teaching uh, this year, and, uh, and so I'm not even going to put a number on it. I'm going to just let the Lord have his way. Holy Spirit, move how you want to move, and uh, we're just going to just preach divine release until, until he says something different. Amen. Amen. I'm going to read uh, out of Ezra, Ezra uh, chapter 1, verses 7 through 11, and I'm going to read this because this is the aspect, this is the focus of our, 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 of our whole 
our understanding of divine release. We have to understand what God is doing. We have to understand how he's moving. We have to understand and put our hands around what he wants to accomplish. You know what the privilege and honor it is for each and every one of us to co-labor together with the Lord, to do his work, to advance the kingdom, to, to win souls to, to the kingdom, to win souls to the Father. I'm so appreciative that he allows you and I to work along with him to accomplish those things. Amen. Let's read the word of the Lord together. Again, that's Ezra chapter 1, verses 7 through 11. It reads this way. King Cyrus also brought out the articles of the house of the Lord, which Nebuchadnezzar had taken from Jerusalem and put in the temple of his gods. I got to read that one more time because I need you to get that. I need you to get that. King Cyrus also brought out the articles of the house of the Lord, which Nebuchadnezzar had taken from Jerusalem and put in the temples of his gods. And Cyrus, the king of Persia, brought them out by the hand of, of Methodereth, the treasurer, and counted them out to Sheshbazir, the prince of Judah. This is the number of them, talking about the articles, talking about what was taken. This is the number of them, 30 gold platters, 1,000 silver platters, 29 knives, 30 gold basins, 410 silver basins of a similar kind, and 1,000 other articles, all the articles of gold and silver, of all the articles, totaled 5,400. All these Sheshbazir took with the captives who were brought from Babylon to Jerusalem. I want you to understand what God is saying here, and I want you to understand what we are going to talk about today. Because in this divine release, in this moment, in this time, this sets the stage for how things are going to go from this time on, from this time forward, and talking about divine release. What God is telling us in this moment is that there is a divine release, and we're getting the things that were stolen from us. We're getting those things back. Those things are being returned to us. Whatever you lost in this season that we find ourselves in, the Lord says it's time for you to get your stuff back. I wish I had two or three people who were excited about that you were mindful and you remember what you lost. You remember what was taken from you. You remember how you felt when it was stolen. I want you to understand with that same understanding, with that same depth of understanding. I want you to know that it's time now to get your stuff back. Tell your neighbor, it's time for me to get my stuff back. It's time for me to get my stuff back. I want you to understand the divine release is not determined by times and seasons. Divine release is not determined by times and seasons. It is always predicated upon capacity. I got to talk to you a little bit about capacity for a minute because capacity, listen to this, is spiritual growth. It is your ability to contain, carry, and hold the, uh, uh, and handle spiritual things that the Father desires to release to you. When we talk about, uh, we talk about divine resources, we talk about, we're talking about getting your stuff back. The, tr the truth of the matter is divine release is all about re getting it back and getting what's yours and getting what's been held up and getting back what's been stolen. But the truth of the matter is you can get it back all day, but if you don't have capacity... If you don't have the wherewithal to hold it, to carry it, to contain it, what good does it do you? You've got to understand this part about capacity. I want you to get that down in your spirit. Again, capacity is about spiritual growth. It is your ability to contain, carry, and hold and handle spiritual things. Things that the Father desires to release to us. And while divine release is not determined by times and season, capacity is. Capacity is determined by what you do in the times and seasons that are allotted to you. I want you to get that down in your spirit. I want you to get, let me give you some word. Uh, uh, Galatians 4, 1 and 2 says this. Listen, it says, now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, <laughs> does not differ at all from a slave. Though he be master of all, but is under guardians and stewards, listen to this, until the time appointed by his father. In other words, that as an heir, you have privy to and access to an inheritance. 
but you don't get the inheritance as long as you're a child. So when we talk about capacity, we talk about capacity uh, 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 that, that while, while divine release is not determined by times and seasons, capacity is, we are talking about your ability to grow and mature in times and seasons. I want you to understand that the last year has been about growth and maturing. This last year, as we were suffering through sheltering in place and wearing masks and being restricted in our movement, where we could go and who we could who we could be around and who we could see, we were restricted. But the, if you missed, if you missed the spirit of the Lord helping us to grow and mature, helping us to understand that first and foremost, we need God. <laughs> First and foremost, we need God. Second, I want you to understand that as your capacity begins to increase, so does your prayer life. If you're not praying, if you did not develop a prayer life in that season, I don't know if, you ever, if you'll ever be able to. I'm not coming down on your heart, but I'm saying that the season warranted a prayer life. It demanded prayer. It demanded time spent with God. It demanded you got into your word. And that is a part of capacity. Are you, had you been screwed? Have you grown? Have you been pushed? I'm talking about capacity. I'm talking about being enlarged. I'm talking about being increased. Here's the first point. I only got three today. Here's the first point. The first point, and I say this all the time, but it fits right here so, so wonderfully. And I had to put it in here. The first point is when it's time to be ready, it's not time to get ready. When it's time to be ready, it is not time to get ready. Listen to this. And you don't get to determine when you're ready. The father does. The father determines that. Did you hear what I said? The father does. In Galatians 4 at the end of that, of that second verse, it says, uh, but, uh, but the child is under guardians and stewards until, listen to this, until the time appointed by the father. Not until the child says, I'm ready. Not until the person says, I'm ready. I can handle it. No, the father will say after he has watched and studied and looked at. When you didn't know he was looking, he was watching. When you thought he wasn't looking, he was, he was determining your moves and determining how you would respond to things. And as he said things before you and as things begin to happen, he's looking at how you respond to him because how you respond is going to determine for him your level of maturity. Spiritual maturity. I want you to get that down because I want you to understand there's some things he put in front of you, uh, uh, some things, some roadblocks in some situation and some circumstance because he wanted to see how you respond. Because in the end of the day, and the truth be told, we're only responsible for our response. You don't have to worry about what the other person did. You, he, he don't want to know. He don't want to talk to you about the other person. He wants to talk to you about you and how you responded and how you was just as nasty and how you cussed because they cussed and how you was ready to fight because they're ready to fight. Where is the more excellent way? Where do you show them a more excellent way? Where do you show them something different? If you respond the same way that the world responds, tell me where the maturity is. Tell me where the spiritual growth is. Father's watching. He determines when you're ready. I love the scripture. I love it because it says, now I say that the heir, the one who has a right to, and the one who will receive the inheritance, it says, as long as he's a child. I wonder how many children I'm speaking to today. I, I, am I speaking to some mature, grown folk, some spiritually mature, grown people, or am I speaking to some babes who can't, who can't eat the sincere uh, uh, meat of the word, but they got to have milk. I wonder who I'm talking to today. This is what it says. It says, as long as he is a child, he does not differ at all from the slave. Can I help you understand that? Can I unpack that from you? As long as you're a child, I expect you to do what you need to do. I expect you to whine. I expect you to get mad. I expect you to walk away, pick up your toys and go home. As long as you're a child. But Paul said, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I, 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 I believed as a child. I saw as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. You can't trick me. You can't fool me. I ain't gonna get twisted up. I determine how I behave. I determine my response. And that's why it's so difficult. It's difficult because when we read the text, the scripture, and the word of God says, if somebody slaps you, turn the other cheek. What? What do you mean turn the other cheek? I'm talking about a spiritually mature response and not a worldly response. 
Oh, I knew it was going to get quiet. I knew it was going to get quiet. I want you to get that. Here, when it's time to be ready, it's not time to get ready. And you don't get to determine when you're ready. The Father does. And trust and believe you're going to go through some stuff. You're going to go through some seasons. You're going to go through some situations. You're going to go through some circumstance. Folk going to lie on you. They're going to stab you in the back. They're going to smile in your face. All the time want to take your place. Some of y'all are too young for that. Y'all know what that is. But the truth of it is, here, here you're going to be faced with some things that you're going to have to stand and say, I'm going to show you a more excellent way. I'm going to respond in a spiritually mature manner. I am not going to respond. Children respond to children. Does What would it look like for a grown man to respond to a child on the level of the child? But that's what we do. That's what we do. Because we see, just because someone is, is, is large in stature, just because they're, uh, they're equal in age to us, does not mean that they are maturely, uh, are spiritually mature. It does not mean that, that, that they're not babes in Christ. They're not children. And so then, what happens? When, something, when they do something, do you go down on their level or do you pull them up to yours? What happened? What is your experience like? What does the father see you doing? What does he see when he looks at you? What does he see you doing? How is he seeing you, you, you respond? And does your respond warrant the release of inheritance? Oh, I'm going to work this today. I'm going to work this today. I want you to get some understanding of this. Listen, you can't start trying to increase capacity at the time and season when, compa when capacity needs to already be present, when capacity already, already needs to be enlarged. It, it, that's that. When it's time to be ready, it's not time to get ready. When, when God comes to you and he, he's, he's, he's showing you some things and he wants to give some stuff to you, if you cannot contain it, if you cannot hold it, if he can't trust you with it, what takes place? What happens? Does, does he still give it to you? Let me ask a question then. Would you give a child a $100 bill who didn't know the difference between a $100 bill and a $1 bill? Would you give that $100 bill to a child? No, you wouldn't. Why? Because you know they weren't mature enough to handle that type of resource. Then why would the father give it to you? Let, let, me, let, me, let me move on. I ain't got a lot of time. Let me move on. Listen, listen, I, I want you to get this in your, in, your, in your spirit. You cannot start trying to increase capacity when it's time to already have capacity. Is that if, if you're just starting to try to increase capacity now, well, you, you're going to be in trouble. Because there's some things that the Father is, is getting ready to, to release to you. And I'm telling you, I'm, I, I, I'm going to get there in a minute, but I want you to understand some things and what God is doing here. Because the Father, in the, in, in the time that your capacity is increased, in the time that you're ready, the Father is going to release some stuff to you. Some stuff is coming back to you. Some stuff that was taken is coming back to you. But only if you're mature enough to handle it. Only if you have the capacity to carry it. Let me go on. Listen to this. Most of us don't start out with the capacity to contain God, what God has predestined for us. It takes us time to grow, to mature, uh, uh, both in, in, in a, from a mental uh, perspective and a spiritual uh, capacity perspective. It, both uh, uh, mental maturity and spiritual maturity are needed to obtain what the Father has for us. Can I say that again? Both uh, uh, mental maturity as well as spiritual maturity are needed. And when I say, uh, I, I'm not talking uh, gender specific. I'm not, when I say man, that's just because the text says, but, but I'm, saying, I'm saying both men and women. We have to think differently. Let this mind be in us. It's also in Christ Jesus. We have to think differently. We have to look at things differently. Your, your, your life is transformed by the renewing of your 
mind. Come on, Bible readers. You got to think differently. You've got to be mature in your thinking. You can't just follow the crowd. You can't do what everybody else is doing. You know, you know, my, my, my grandma used to say this, and I know everybody, everybody has at least heard this one time. Everybody. If your friend jump off the building, you're going to jump off too? I know everybody didn't heard that. The truth of the matter is, while, while it sounds ridiculous, you'd be surprised at how many of us get, 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 get messed up and entangled in stuff because we're running with people and we don't even know where they're going. We're running blindly. We're, we're in, when we get involved in things that we wish we could go back and turn back the hands of time and not be involved, but it's because we do things blindly. This is what it's saying right here. I want you to get this down in your spirit because you're going to have to begin to mature mentally as well as spiritually in order to obtain what the Father has for you. That means in order for us to experience divine release, hear me now, in order for us to experience divine release, we need to have the capacity to receive what's coming. We ought to already be stretched. We ought to already be at the place where our capacity is increased. Ask your neighbor, are you ready for what's on its way? <laughs> ask your neighbor, just ask them. Whoever you're sitting next to at home, if you ain't sitting next to somebody, tweet it and ask somebody. Text and ask somebody. Are you ready? Are you ready? Do you have the capacity? to receive what's on its way. Can I say this? If you have not grown, if you have not, if, if your mental uh, ability has not been stretched and matured, if you are not spiritually mature, I would suggest that you are not going to be ready for what's on its way and what God wants to release to you. There's some stuff coming for you. There's some stuff coming for you. There's some stuff that he's been holding. There's some stuff he's been waiting for a season and a time where you would grow and you would mature and you would enlarge and have more capacity. There's a, there's a season that, that, and I believe that we've come out of a season. We're on our way out of a season where we are being stretched and we're being formed to grow. We're being forced to do church in a different way. We're being forced to interact with individuals in a different way. We're being forced to share the gospel in a different way way requires stretching requires room for capacity for additional capacity to receive all that God has for us listen there's two things I want I want to share with you two things I'm gonna hurry up two things because I want you to get this increasing your capacity takes place in two ways there are two ways to increase your capacity and I want you to get this down in your spirit because you got to grow. There's some stuff coming for you. I want you to get all that God has for you. But until you grow, until the Father sees, and you, sees you maturing, until he sees you expanding, he is not going to release it. You will still be as a child. And as a child, you're no different from a slave. That's what the word says. But until the Father determines that you're ready, then all the riches and all that he has for you and all the blessings and all the promises that he wants to release in your life until you're ready to receive it, it won't come. Listen to this. Two ways in which you can increase your capacity. One, increasing capacity by adding to what's already existing. I mean, if you all understand, and I like to work with my hand. I like to do renovation stuff. I like to tear up the house and put it back together again, all that kind of stuff. I like to add on to the house. I just added on uh, uh, to my deck. I just added on 900 square feet on my deck, the backside of my house, 900 square feet. I want you to, I want you to, to, to get this, this picture in your mind because if we take this, if we take our sanctuary and those that redeem and love, if you've been in here, if you take our sanctuary and you split it, you split one half on the other side. One half is not as big as how, how much I've increased my deck in, in square footage. So listen, listen, I say that because I want you to get a picture in your mind and understand what I mean when I say that. You can, you can, you can take something that's already there and you can add to it. You can increase it in stature. You can increase it in function. You can increase it in capacity. One of the things that I was mindful of my kid, as I was building this, this deck, there's a part of the deck that probably stands about 16 feet off the ground. There's a part that wasn't there before. It wasn't nothing there. And so this part, I want to make sure that it could hold, it could hold what was put upon it. 
So when we had people over to the house and people were outside and we were eating and, and you know, we were outside just lounging and having fun and relaxing and talking. There's a fire pit and a, or a fireplace there as well. If kids were out there, young people out there, and we're just talking and there were 50 people on the deck, I wanted to make sure that the deck, the deck was strong enough and could hold that which was put upon it. I'm saying that because in the same, likewise, spiritually, I want, I want us to make sure that we have enough capacity that we can hold whatever the Father puts on us, whatever he places on us, whatever he sets on our shoulders. Listen to me, whatever he entrusts to us. I want to make sure that we can hold it, that we, that we have the capacity, we have the strength, the wherewithal to bear it. Try to get this down in your spirit. And so, so, so I, I did, I did twice as much as was needed. In fact, I did it to the degree that when the inspector came over, the very first time the inspector came to inspect the framework, he said, sir, are you, do you plan on driving a truck on top of this deck? I said, no, sir. I said, but my family's going to be up here and my friends are going to be up here. And that, those individuals mean more to me than anything else. So, so I did twice as much to ensure that those individuals who would be, have to be held by the thing that I was building will be safe and secure. Listen to this. So, so when, when we talk about, listen to this, when we talk about adding to what's already existing, hear, hear me, because I know, I know, I know our frames. I know, I know if, if I could take some of these, these bad knees and replace them with some new knees, I would, but it just don't work like that. I wish I could just unlock them and lock some new knees in. I wish I could, could, could you know, I wish I could uh, take some of this gray hair off my head and, and put some, you know, some other different color hair on there that wasn't gray. But the truth of the matter is, I know I can die, but, it, but that don't even work for a long time. That's just temporary. And that's the problem with many of us is that we always looking for temporary fixes to permanent things. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. While you cannot add to your structure, you can add to your ability uh, with adding an additional skill set, adding the right people, adding the correct mindset, adding the correct attitude and, and the correct work ethic. I'm trying to help you understand that you, there's some things that you can add. It may not be a, a physical structure and a physical adding, but but I, I'm always in awe of a uh, 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 Marquia Shepard because you know she she went undergrad and you know she played softball and she's always been a standout she's my shero and uh, she's always done these great things and then she she as soon as she finished her undergrad she went right into her master's program and finished her master program as soon as she finished that she went right into her doctorate program and she's finishing that up I'm in awe of her because you know what she's doing she's adding capacity she's adding to herself she's increasing her knowledge she's increasing her skill set every time she sits down at a class every Every time she opens up a book, she's increasing herself. It's not hard to increase yourself. You just got to have a want to. It's not hard to add a skill set. It's not hard to add knowledge. It's not hard to add wisdom. But, but you got to want to do it. And you can do it. You can do it. So that's the first way. The first way is in, in increasing capacity by adding to what's already existing. The second way, this is the way that most of us do it. The second way is by creating capacity by removing things that are taking up much needed space. There's some stuff that we carry around with us that's taking up space that if we would get rid of that stuff that we no longer need, that's not beneficial. That's not helpful. In fact, it's dragging us down. It's a weight. It's a weight that's dragging us down. But if we got rid of it, we could increase our capacity simply by getting rid of some stuff that doesn't work for us. It doesn't help us. Listen to this. This is some of the stuff that we need to get rid of in order to increase our space, to increase our capacity. Letting go of unforgiveness. Letting go of what someone did to you. Let it go. You know why? Because letting it go helps you. Letting it go helps you. Let it go. Let it. Don't let it weigh you down. Don't let it become a weight. Don't drag it around for years only to find out that you could have let it go years ago. I'm not saying forget about it. I'm saying learn from it. I'm saying be a better person as a result of it. Learn from it, but let it go. Don't drag it around because it'll become every, it'll become the excuse for everything that didn't work right in your life. Let it go. 
Listen, 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 listen. We, we increase the capacity by removing things that are taking up much needed space and capacity. Uh, uh, listen to this, walking away from unhealthy relationships. How many times? How many times are you going to be in the same relationship? How many times are you going to be in the same? And I ain't even talking about the same person. Because you're in the same relationship, you just switch names. First it was, it was Mike. But then Mike acted just like John. And John acted just like Lewis. And Lewis acted just like Bobby. And so you've been in the same relationship with five different people that you said different names. But they're the same type of people that you go after. Find out what's inside you that draws you to people that mean you no good. I don't know what it is about women that like dogs. I don't know what it is that, 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 that make you want to just, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't understand it. But learn how to, to identify the patterns in your life. Learn how to identify uh, 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 when you've gone around the mulberry bush and, 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 and you, you found your place and, and, and you know, you, you found that you were in a situation that you've been in before and you, you've gone about the mulberry bush. So when I say go around the mulberry bush, you go around the mulberry bush and you, you come back around and you say, you know what, this looks familiar. It looks like I've been here before. I don't know. But you go around again, the mulberry bush, you go back around again and you come back around again. You be like, I know I've been here before. I know I've seen that before. But you're going back around again. And the third time you're like, you know what, I know I've been here. But you keep going around the same mulberry bush. Why? Why aren't you learning from it? Why are you, why are you allowing yourself to, to be in the unhealthy relationships? Let it go. <laughs> you need to increase your capacity for more. You need to increase your capacity for more. When you walk in those kind of relationships, you know what happens? Your capacity is decreased. It's decreased. You know why? Because people in unhealthy relationships are always trying to win other people over. You're always trying to get their approval. You're always trying to get them to like you. Sweetheart, they not going to like you like that. And the better you understand that, the better you can move, the quicker you can move on. I'm trying to help you today because if people are not increasing you, then they are decreasing you. Why do you keep trying to get people to like you? Why do you keep, why, you, why, do you, why, why are you trying, let me, let me say it this way, let me say it this way. Marquis, maybe you can help me, I don't know. But, but why do people try to get something from people that do, and they don't have the capacity for what you're trying to get? I, I'm saying this in this manner. It's some people, it, there are some people that, that you, want, you want their love so bad, but they don't have the capacity to love you like you want to be loved. But why don't you recognize that? After all these years, after all this time, you can't even see this person does not have the capacity to love you the way you want to be loved. And the sooner you realize that, the sooner you'll stop holding them to a place and a level that they cannot achieve. You frustrating yourself and you're frustrating them. I'm trying to help you understand capacity so we can remove things in our life. We can, we can remove things in our life. We can learn not to stay in the wrong season too long. It's all right to find yourself in the wrong season, but when you find yourself in the wrong season, get out. Move on. Shift and turn direction. If you find yourself in the wrong season, baby, let me tell you something. There's not one person under the sound of my voice who can say that they've never found themselves in the wrong season. If you live past 10 years old, but when you find yourself in the wrong season, learn how to turn. Because I guarantee you, God turned a long time ago. You just missed his turn. Turn and catch up. Turn and he'll wait for you. Turn and he'll let make sure that you find him. Turn when you find that you are in the wrong season trying to get you to understand this because God wants to release some stuff. Some stuff is coming. I'm going to talk about it in just a second. I ain't got much time, but I want you to sell some stuff is coming. Some stuff that's been taken. Some stuff is coming. Listen to this. Listen. This is the second point. Divine release will only take place to the degree, to the, to the degree, to the degree that capacity 
is currently available. Do you hear what I'm saying? Divine release will only take place to the degree that capacity is right now. In the moment of release, it's available. If you don't have capacity, there will be no divine release. Because you cannot hold what God is trying to give it. You cannot carry what he's trying to release to you. And if you don't have capacity, divine release will not be your portion. That's why in this moment, capacity is so important. That's why you got to look and you got to do some investigative search. You got to do some introspection and you got to look at your life and you got to determine where can I add? Where can I increase? Where can I learn more? And then you got to look and say, what can I remove? What can I let go of? What can I get rid of? That's taking up room. That's something more productive. Something that's God be in that place, in that space in my life. When divine release comes, it will only take place to the degree that capacity is currently available. Do you have capacity? If God showed up right now, do you have capacity? Do you have capacity? Why do you think Jesus asked questions like, well, uh, will you be made whole? Do you have the capacity to be made whole? Will you be healed? Do you have the capacity to be healed? Why do you think he would ask those questions? Because the person who needed it was going to have to participate. And you're going to have to participate. But do you have the capacity to even participate? <laughs> do, you, do you have the capacity? Okay. Okay. Let me say it like this. Because some of y'all some of y'all uh, 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 looking at me a little funny. So let me say it like this. Let me say you got a credit card. That credit card got a limit. That credit card had a limit. And, 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 if, and if you went to, to college in any period of time, for whatever reason, they gave all made sure a college student got a credit card. And the college student made sure that they were going to spend that credit card up to the max. Until you went back into the store trying to buy something and you swiped that credit card and it came back declined. Because now you have reached the end of the capacity of that car. <laughs> you can swipe it all you want to. It's going to still come back to Clyde because you have used up all of its capacity. You have used up all of its ability to, to, to purchase items for you. It can no longer because it only has a limited amount of capacity. And until you get a credit increase. Don't act like y'all know what that is. Because y'all college students when you're in school and you're charged all the way up, you call those people and ask, can you increase my credit line? You can't pay what you were charged, but you want to charge some more. I ain't coming down on you. I'm just speaking what I know. I was a college student at one time, so I understand. But it's time for us to mentally mature, to think about if I charge all this stuff, I'm going to have to pay for it eventually. It ain't free. Increase, 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 increase. Divine increase will only take place to the degree that capacity is available. Check out this scripture. I'm going to read the scripture. I'm almost done. Look at, listen to this. This is out of uh, Matthew 25. Verses 14 through 28. Listen to this, what the Bible says. It says, for the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered to them his goods. To one, he gave five. To another, he gave two. And to another one, he gave one. Listen to this. To each according to their own ability. <laughs> to each according to their own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. And then he who had received five talents went and traded with them and made another five. So now he's got ten. And likewise, who who had received two gained two more also. So now instead of two, he's got four. Also, uh, he who had received one went and dug a hole in the ground and hid his Lord's talent. 
After a long time, the Lord uh, of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received five talents came and gave him another five, saying, Lord, I, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents beside them. His Lord said, well done, good and faithful servant. You, you were faithful in a few things. I will make you ruler over many. Enter into the joy of the Lord. He, uh, he who also had received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents beside them. And the Lord said to him, well done. Good and faithful servant, you have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Then he who received one talent, uh -huh, the one talent person, came and said, Lord, I knew you were a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. He says, and I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Listen to the verbiage. I was afraid. I went and hid your talent in the ground. What you gave me, what you entrusted to me. I was afraid. I went and hid it in the ground. What were you afraid of? I was afraid people were going to laugh at me. I was afraid if, if they knew I was a Christian, they wouldn't like me. I was afraid I wouldn't fit in. I was afraid. So I took what you gave me, the very talent and the ability that you gave me. I took what you gave me to increase. I took what you gave me and I put it, buried it in the ground. The only thing you bury in the ground is dead things. But he said, I took it the talent. <laughs> we got a room full of talented people. We got a room full of people who have ambition, people who know stuff, people who are smart and intelligent. But the truth of the matter is, because we get so entwined with the world, that the truth is that sometimes we're afraid of sharing and showing that we have talent. I've known people, I've known and counseled young men who are as smart as they could be, but when they were flunking in school, and when I asked them, I know you're smart, I know you know this stuff, why are you flunking? You know what the answer was? Because I don't want to be different than my, than my boys. What? So you're failing, not because you don't know this stuff. You're failing because you want to fit in. Because you're afraid to stand out. I want to talk to all the people whom the Lord has given a talent and an ability to. I want to talk to you and say to you, I bind the spirit of fear that you will stand out. You will be heads and shoulders above people. You will do what God has called you to do. And you won't be afraid. You won't be afraid. I bind fear. I bind fear. Whatever talent the Lord has given you, whatever talent the master has shared with you, whether you got five talents, two talents, or one talent, you won't be afraid. You won't be fearful. This is what it says. The Bible says, he says, I was afraid. I went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, look, uh, there, uh, here you have what is yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, you wicked and lazy servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown, and I gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with bankers, and at my coming, you would have, I would have received back my own with interest. This is what he says. This is what he says, Marquis. He says, therefore, take the talent from him. Take the talent from him and give it to him who has 10 talents. I want you to understand the magnitude of what's just happened. He's trusted each one. He said he gave it to them according to their ability to handle it. The Lord gives to us according to our ability to handle it. He gives it to us according to our ability to, to walk in it, to increase it. Listen to this. He gives it to us according to our ability to multiply it. He doesn't want the same thing that he gave you. He wants it back multiplied. He wants it increased. How do, you, how do you increase a talent? You work it. You exercise it. How do you increase a talent? You, you, you get better at it by practice, practice, practice. That's how you increase it. He wants it better than he gave it to you. And if you don't use it, <laughs> oh my God, there's a whole bunch of folk. There's a whole bunch of folk. There's a whole bunch of folk that won't use the talent. If you won't use it, he'll take it from you. Y'all remember that, that song? I mean, uh, the, the, um, it's a movie. Eddie Kane was in the movie. He was a, he was a character in the Kane. What was it called? Y'all? 
Five, five heartbeats. Y'all remember Eddie Kane? Remember how he could sing? Eddie, woo, he could sing. He could sing, right? At the end, he abused the talent. At the end, he tried to sing. He said, y'all watch this, watch this. I'm coming back, I'm coming back. And that boy opened his mouth. He sounded like me. If you abuse it, if you don't use it for its purpose and its intent, you don't multiply it, it can be taken from you. Let, let me hurry up. Let me hurry up. Listen, listen. To each according, he gave to each according to his own ability. God will take your natural and add his super to it. But you got to give him something to work with. You got to give him something to work with. You got to at least have a heart to try. You got to at least put your hands to it. You got to at least put, put uh, uh, take some steps towards it. You got to try. Give him something to work with. He will take your natural and add his super, thereby making it supernatural. But give him something to work with. Give him something to work with. Listen. Here, here's what it says. I want you to get this. <laughs> uh, listen, to it. it says, King Cyrus also brought out the articles of the house of the Lord, which Nebuchadnezzar had taken from Jerusalem and put in the temple of his God. <laughs> he stole some stuff from the house of God. Isn't that, isn't that funny? Isn't that just like the world to steal some stuff from the house of God? <laughs> the, you know, the truth of the matter is there's some stuff that, that you ain't got to steal. So there's some stuff to go willingly. Some stuff will, will, will walk right on out the door into the world, and they prefer the world over the Father. Oh, yeah, I knew that was going to be real quiet right there. Listen, King Cyrus also brought out the articles of the house of the Lord, which Nebuchadnezzar, I want you to understand, this is, this is someone else. This is not, this is Nebuchadnezzar used to be the king, but he's no longer the king. There's a new king. This is years later, and the children have been in captivity. And now the Lord has stirred the spirit of King Cyrus, and he said, I'm going to release the people to go back and build the Lord a house in Jerusalem. So he says, go, go and get the stuff out of the treasury. And as they go get the stuff, the Bible says that, that, that it, wasn't, it wasn't the treasurer. It wasn't one of the other servants. It wasn't the captain of the guard. The Bible says that, that King Cyrus also brought out the articles of the house of the Lord, which Nebuchadnezzar had taken from Jerusalem and put in the temple of his God. Listen, his last and final point. Stolen goods have to be returned during divine release. <laughs> that comes from your ca capacity it comes, it, it comes when your capacity is increased to do more for the kingdom. Stolen goods, stuff that has been taken from you. It's some stuff that's getting ready to come to you that has been taken. Some, some of you all, uh, uh, things, your, your self-confidence have been, has been stolen. That, that, that things happen to you and your, your self-confidence. You stop believing in you. You stop believing you could do it. You stop believing you could become it. And the Lord says, I'm getting ready to return some stuff that's been stolen. There's some things he's put inside of you, some, some inventions some ideas, some things that have never been even seen or, or heard of in the earth. There's some, that's why it's called an invention because it has not yet been invented. And so he's getting ready to put some things in you, some things that were taken out of the house of God, some things that were taken out of the house of God that were stored and tucked away that the Lord says, I'm getting ready to move on it because here's the truth of the matter. The truth of the matter is while the enemies thought that they were stealing it, they weren't stealing it. They were just tucking away and they were hiding it for you. Let me tell you something. I want you to understand this. There is no better place to hide something that you won't be, you, you don't want to be stolen than to hide it with a thief. <laughs> there is no better place to hide what you don't want to be stolen than to hide it with a thief. You see, you and I don't think that way. That's why Isaiah 55 says, his thoughts are above our thoughts, his ways above our ways. Because while he had, Nebuchadnezzar thought he was taking stuff and hoarding it and bringing it back, bringing it back uh, uh, to, 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 uh, to that part of the country to, uh, with the people uh, in captivity. But, but he didn't understand that God says, I'm going to raise up a king. 
<laughs> who has a heart for me. And that king's going to go in because that king's got access where other people don't have access. But the king says, I'm going to go in. I'm going to get the stuff myself. I ain't going to wait for nobody else to get it. I'm going to go and get what I know was taken from the house of the Lord. And I'm going to bring it back. And I'm going to give it to the people. And they're going to take it back to Jerusalem. And they're going to put it in God's house. It's going to be built for him. I'm trying to tell you there's a divine release that's coming and some of the stuff that's coming to you is stuff that was stolen. It's coming back. It was hidden. It was tucked away. The enemy thought that they had, had captured it and they had taken it. But the Lord said, no, nah, I'm just letting you hold it for me. And when it's time for me to release it to them, when they have, when it's time for divine release and they have the capacity to take it and to hold it, to, to, uh, to, to, for me to build upon it and establish my kingdom forever. He says, I'm going to cause the king. I'm going to raise him up. And I'm going to bring him out. And he's going to come out with all those things that were taken. I'm trying to help you understand that divine release is coming to you. Divine release is coming to you. And what was taken wasn't stolen. It was hidden. <laughs> what was taken is going to be returned. As long as you have the capacity to carry it, to hold it, to, to, to bear it up. As long as you have the capacity, God's going to do it. I believe he is. I believe he's going to do it. I believe he is. I believe he's going to do it. Let me tell you the first step in the right direction is becoming a Christian. The first step in the right direction is being saved. And you may not even know Jesus Christ in the full part of your sin. You may not know him. You, you may have never said, Lord, come into my life. Save me. I've done some things I shouldn't have done. I've been in some places I shouldn't have been. But God, your word says, if I, if I believe in my heart, Lord Jesus Christ, if I confess in my mouth, believe in my heart, you, your word says that I shall indeed be saved. But Lord, listen, I confess you. I'm confessing you today. I'm saying that you are Lord. I am saying that you died for me. You died for all my sins. I believe it in my heart. I may confess it with my mouth. Your word says, if I do those two things, that I shall be saved. If that's you today and you want to be saved, that's all it takes. If that's you today and you want the Father to speak to your heart, if you want to be saved, if you want to be, if you, you don't want to be like the, the one who had one talent and was afraid, so he put it in the, in the earth, he dug a hole and he buried it. Stop burying what God has given you. Stop burying what he's entrusted, the talent that he's entrusted to you. Stop burying it because you're afraid that the world won't like you. You know, the world is fickle. All you gotta do is watch some of these stars and some of these musicians and some of these singers and actors. And, and, and one little thing, they turn on you. One little thing, buddy, it's all over. The world is fickle. I wouldn't put my trust in the world. I'd put my trust in a God who never changes, who never leaves me nor forsakes me, who's always present and ready and willing to help me. It's your portion today. You can draw a line in the sand. You can step over it. And today, you can be saved. That's my heart's prayer for you. That's my heart's desire for you. I'm excited about your new. All those who are making the decision today, there's a number that we want you to call. It's 1-855-REDEEM-0. If you call that 1-855 number, there will be a someone on the other side of it, on the other line, to answer. A live intercessor to be on the line that that person will pray with you, give you information and materials for next steps. Well, our time is up and over. I pray that you have received the word with gladness today. I pray that it has touched you at a place where it just changes you. I don't want it to touch you at a place where it stirs your emotions. I want it to touch you at a place where it changes you and turns you, causes you to repent, causes you in the in the. The re, penta, the re is the turn, the penta, the high place, your mind causes you to change your mind about some things. That's my heart's desire for you today. That's my hope. If this word has met you at that place. Until we meet again, it's my prayer that the Lord would bless you, that he would prosper you. And everything your hand touches, he will cause it to prosper. And everywhere your feet treads, he will give you that as possession. I pray and I speak favor over your life. I say you're above only and not beneath. You are the head and never the tail. You're blessed when you come in. You're blessed when you go out. You're blessed in the city. You're blessed in the field. You're blessed when you lie down and you're blessed when you rise up. Until we see each other again, God bless you.